The Databases for Machine Learning and Machine Learning for Databases seminar series at Carnegie Mellon University is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Funding for this program is made possible by Google and from contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome, guys. Uh, we're here for another uh, talk at the Data Seminar Series. We're excited today to have Lee Liu. Uh, he's a principal software engineer at uh, Zillus, uh, where he works and helps build the Middleless Vector Database System. So as always, if you have a question for Lee as he's giving his talk, please unmute yourself, say who you are, and fire your question off at any time. Uh, we appreciate him calling in from China to give this talk, where it's currently 5.30 AM. Uh, it's, so it's it's not the record. I think the, the latest we've ever had was somebody in India at, at I think, 3.30 AM. Uh, but still, it's very early for him. We, we appreciate him getting up for us. So again, Lee, thank you so much for being here. The floor is yours. Go for it. OK, OK. So hello, everyone. My, I'm from Milos. The first I want to express my I, sincere. Yeah. Actually, I was going to forget this. You're distinguished CMU alumni. I, I, it's very terrible. I, meant, I forgot to mention this. Lee is CMU alum. So we appreciate him coming back to talk to us. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So yeah, okay, okay I'll just start. So <clears throat> uh, first, I want to just express my sincere uh, gratitude to Andy for inviting me to revisit uh, CMU. I spent quite a happy time years before, so uh, so glad that I can share Milo's technology and uh, uh, as well as uh, our industry insights with uh, all of you today. Yeah. Uh, Mios is one of the world's most famous vector uh, database, I'll say, and uh, uh, is the most popular open source vector database with a very super active uh, community. Uh, it is uh, actually the world's first vector database with uh, a five year history. Yeah, five years mm, is quite a long time. Well, it uh, probably doesn't sound like a very long time comparing with uh, something, uh, the, the history of uh, MySQL and uh, HBase, this kind of thing. Um, this is because vector database is a brand new field. So many design and the concepts in the vector database uh, area have have not have not been thorough, thoroughly tested yet. So always keeping this in mind, as uh, implies that uh, on the other hand, there's still a lot of work to be done and plenty of opportunities. So in today's talk, I would like to discuss the design principle within Mills architecture. Hope that uh, it, it will serve as both informative and inspiring. And uh, yeah, something about myself. I'm from Zelis, I'm principal from engineer from Zelis. Okay, uh, before digging into the specific co content, I like to leave you all with a question. So what is the relationship between traditional search and uh, vector search? And uh, what is that of between traditional database and uh, vector database? I'll put a video here as a hint, and we will revisit these uh, two questions toward the conclusion of uh, this talk. Yeah, so I get a turkey cardboard. Is there supposed to be audio? Sorry for this. Uh huh. I know it's just a video. I'm sorry. I didn't put any audio inside it. <laughs> so, yeah, this time we get a poodle. And that's the one. I try to get a glass. Glasses. That's pretty cool. And uh, you got the glasses. All right, yeah, that, that that's is a small video just uh, about uh, to to start to start everything up. Uh, well, uh, we'll cover three aspects in today's presentation. So first, I will give a brief introduction of uh, Milvus general architecture, where you <laughs> where you may notice the the uniqueness of Milvus architecture compared to other similar uh, products. And then I will dig into uh, uh, the design of an important component of Milvus, the right part of it. And uh, this, show, this shows how Mulus is uh, designed with focus on machine learning. Last but not least, uh, I want to 
discuss our challenges uh, and solutions in a you know, broader context of uh, machine learning boom. Not only about uh, the perspective of database design for machine learning, uh, but also uh, from how machine learning booming can 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 promote the vector database. All right, let's start with the introduction of Mirrors first. Uh, before talking about the uh, vector database, let me first introduce the concept of uh, vector search. I've been previous uh, previous talks uh, have already covered uh, this uh, extensively. So basically vector search is about finding similar vectors uh, uh, giving a query vector. For example, the KN algorithm is one of the most famous, uh, one of the famous uh, vector search algorithm, I would say. And now uh, let's, let's get more pra uh, practical and think about uh, scenarios of uh, how vector search is applied to our daily life. Uh, we can uh, image search is a classical example. Now, just like one day I came across my a picture of uh, our uh, this uh, memorable landmark. I would like to find more pictures of um, from different uh, perspective. But uh, then walking to the sky was uh, at the tip of my tongue. So I simply drag this uh, picture to into Google. Uh, just uh, uh, I search it and uh, got so many pictures about walking to the sky behind us. Uh, so behind the scene. Uh, it, fu it functions follow. So first, we a deep learning model extract uh, the embedding of the first uh, walk to the sky images as uh, its, pre uh, its presentation vector. Then uh, we search for similar vectors in database. Vector similar uh, sim similarity often represents the similarity of uh, this corresponding unstructured data behind it. So in this case, uh, so it's similarity of the images. Uh, that's how we got the similar uh, similar walking to the sky pictures, and uh, then we uh, then, then we get everything. Yeah, and actually, be, besides uh, image, besides image, vector search is applied to various of uh, type of unstructured data like uh, uh, audio and uh, documents and uh, yeah more videos. All right, so. When we talk about the vector search, we can we cannot do this uh, without mentioning face. Yeah, this is uh, a library at Facebook open source in 2017 uh, with many sorts of vector search algorithm inside it. So here's a big question. Uh, why on earth do we need an, a vector database like Milvus uh, that is also focused on vector search when we already have, when we have already uh, got something like face uh, out there also do the same thing? So let me try to break this down for you. So first of all, face doesn't support delete and uh, update this kind of thing. So I believe this uh, very common operations inside uh, uh, for, 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 for any database. And uh, when things goes wrong, when the system for, uh, fails, face will be left uh, hanging. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have the persistence, the persistence to pick up the pieces. And face act as an algorithm library is uh, not built for handle uh, <coughs> to handle the huge pile of data since it, it doesn't have it doesn't support complex uh, distributed deployment. So besides this, we still have so many other things we need to uh, to, to we need for a production uh, production DB or use cases like uh, resources management, <coughs> monitoring, the uh, data backup, and so on. <coughs> okay. Uh, you 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 may have noticed that so a vector database actually consists of uh, uh, vector search algorithm and database features. Uh, Face and Milvus are similar to similar to the relationship are similar to UnoDB and uh, MySQL. So how does Milvus combine these algorithm and features and uh, uh, and what makes it special? So first, uh, Milvus uh, distributed uh, architecture allow it to handle huge amount of data. Then I would say uh, Milvus has a uh, multi-level insertion uh, structures that provide a, 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 the capability to balance the data freshness and the eff efficient, uh, efficiency at the same time. I will, uh, I will introduce more about this later. Also, Milvus uh, is equipped with many data-driven optimizations with tune performance based on how the data is uh, spread out. And finally, the batch processing cap capability uh, supported to <laughs> enable us to operate massive uh, data and do some global optimization. Uh, quick, quick, uh, quick, quick question: Do you do you guys yeah. like? Is the big vision because 
you want to have fast ingestions and do delete updates, do you see Middleus as being the databases of record? Or do you see it as like this, like a, a elastic search kind of thing where like you have the primary database and then you stream updates to Middleus and then you do all your vector searches on that? Uh, we have both kind of this kind of, uh, I saw a lot of usage, like uh, you have a database and you're streaming your data into a vector database and do search. And also virtual uh, but Mule sometimes also get used to support this kind of virtual search itself. So without this backup data database, okay. it's not a okay. search engine, it's a database. Thing. Okay, awesome, thanks. All right. Uh, okay, so yeah, so Mule's latest version is uh, 2.3.2, yeah. Uh, back to Mule's 1.0, it was actually a single node architecture. So it just uh, simply adds some basic database features to a vector search algorithm like a face. Uh, MILS 1.0 mainly includes uh, four main modules, proxy, storage, index, and query. And it, it can handle tens of millions of vectors very uh, easily. So which perfectly satisfy the requirement we've received at that time. So, but luckily we were, we were able to foresee the Huge amount of data we we will got uh, we we got today and uh, get prepared earlier. Uh, two years ago, uh, we began the shift of uh, uh, we can shift to distributed architecture. So each of the four modules are uh, pulled out and uh, transformed into individual distributed module and uh, with a master slave uh, uh, pattern. So then we introduced the message uh, Q, message queue into Mulas like Kafka or Posa, uh, yeah. And to decouple each uh, modules, and now we got uh, MILS two point zero, uh, our current uh, our current uh, current architecture. When we insert data, it first uh, uh, it first uh, go through the proxy to, and quickly get into the message queue, and uh, data node picks it up from there and does, and does some segmentation uh, storage work and this kind of storage work and so on, and then put it back into the storage uh, object storage. The next uh, index node takes uh, data, uh, data generated by a uh, data node and start build an index, a vector versus index, and put it back into the object, uh, object storage. Meanwhile, uh, the current node pulls the uh, latest data from the message queue to provide real-time uh, query support. When we do when we do search, the index built uh, by index node is loaded to uh, is loaded by the current node from the object storage to local disk memory. It depends on what kind of index are you, uh, we were using. So along with some real time data pulled from the message you mentioned before, and to provide the query uh, service. Uh, in this uh, arc design, I want to highlight some 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 key points. I'll say uh, first. Uh, First, we separate storages and uh, computations to boost uh, flexibility. Then the whole cluster is micro uh, micro uh, micro uh, serviced and uh, managed by Kubernetes for autom uh, automatic uh, automatic deployment and management. So finally, I will say the message queue helps uh, helps decouple and uh, uh, all stateless components. And I like to go a bit deeper inside the separate of uh, storage and computation. This is very classical topic inside database theory, actually. But due to its complexity, most of system, including most of the vector, uh, most of the vector database, haven't uh, implemented this very well. Uh, it took us uh, several years of uh, hard work to finally go distributed in in, uh, in, uh, in the official in the official release of uh, uh, 2.0. But uh, it pays off. Uh, since we we've got plenty of uh, sacred weapons for handling huge data in machine learning area, uh, eras. First, I would say, uh, for example, uh, query index, uh, query and the index building and storage can be scaled independent independently to meet different needs in in different scenarios. So the second one is beside besides uh, we. Uh, we, we, we will notice, uh, uh, you, you, you may notice that the different role in different type of uh, resources. In our case, it's a proxy and data node uh, IO bounded, and query node is uh, CPU and memory bounded uh, because of the heavy vector distance calculation. And the index node is also the heavy CPU, CPU usage scenario. Uh, allocate different resources to different roles can significantly uh, improve the cluster uh, efficiency and uh, reduce uh, cost. 
Also, upgrade uh, upgrades failure recovery uh, or heavy usage of a uh, specific role will, uh, will not uh, affect the normal operation of other components. Improved uh, maintenance and uh, robust uh, rob robust uh, robustness of the whole cluster. So independent uh, state uh, independent and stateless index nodes and uh, data nodes can be pooled. So uh, this can this can utilize a different uh, usage hotspots uh, hot hotspots uh, of different usage, users to improve the resource utilization and the index building speed. So this is very suitable for cloud services and uh, is, it is currently adopted by Mills, uh, by Zilis Cloud, which is based on uh, on Mimus. This is a high level overview of uh, uh, Mimus architecture and. Uh, uh, main pathways. So in next session, I would like to deep, uh, I would like to dive into the right pathway to show you more details about Mimus. So yeah, this is a right pathway. All right. So when it comes to the design detail of the uh, vector database, vector search algorithm is uh, an inevitable uh, topic because many design decisions are made regarding to the attributes of algorithms. So vector search algorithm are uh, heart of uh, a vector database. In Mimus, we uh, they consumed over eighty percent of the CPU usage. Unlike traditional database, uh, traditional databases that perform deterministic uh, search, which means uh, it has to be one hundred percent accurate. A vector vector database, um, the main feature of vector database, uh, uh, vector search, uh, problem probabilistic. It will I will repeat these two words so many times in uh, within this uh, talk so, yeah, later. Yeah, this means that uh, most of the uh, time vector uh, vector databases don't require the absolute top k result uh, nearest uh, results. In uh, instead, we can uh, treat precisions for higher performance. In this picture uh, on the left shows uh, on the left shows nowhere uh, Mimus vector search engine. It, it is a plugable adapter that supports various uh, algorithms, including uh, face seri series, uh, scan from face, and uh, uh, GPU index from NVIDIA Raft, uh, and it's also something like face, it's also library like face, and action W, DSN, this, uh, and more. For, uh, for, uh, for, from algorithms perspective, uh, they can be roughly divided into three different categories. Uh, the first one is brute force search. I like to. Uh, I, I I didn't put it on the left uh, graph, but uh, it's very important in scenarios that requires very high precision uh, or some real time data search because we don't need any building uh, build build time for it. So the second category is uh, IVF series. The the main idea here is to split the vector into blocks and uh, then speed up searches by ignoring less likely uh, blocks. And the third uh, third type uh, third type is. Uh, uh, the graph-based algorithm. They are the best choice if you uh, need both high precision and speed. We'll cover the, the basic of this algorithm next. But just to be clear, so so uh, many of us can support yeah. all of these the, these categories. And like the so when I when I start using the, the system and I load in say a table, I specify what indexes I want to build, or do you guys build all of them? Or how do how do I decide? Uh, you can say you have just uh, you have a API set called create index, and you can specify what kind of index you want to create and what config what parameters should be. And then in the hosted version of Melibus, uh, like the cloud version, since you see people creating the indexes, can you can you say like what the distribution is? Is like is are most people picking HNSW or or, or, or they're just choosing the default? What's and if the yes, what's the default? Like what's the most common okay, index? I yeah, I was in two aspects. First is uh, from uh, cloud perspective. So we, we in the cloud we we will support something called all index because we want to cover the uh, complexity of uh, uh, decision making of the algorithm picking. Uh, so the all index behind the all index is some some our uh, self developed uh, uh, algorithm. It's a graph based algorithm. So okay. we don't open source it. And uh, in Mimus, we have some. So many different uh, of uh, like this different different kind of algorithm and uh, let people to pick. And to our experience of from open source community, the HNSW, this uh, and the uh, IVF series is the most uh, popular one. Got the most popular one. Okay, and then uh, but in the cloud version, you guys have a, something that looks like HNSW, but it's, but it's proprietary. Mm, yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. 
Uh, okay, first, uh, let's start with the uh, classical IVF uh, algorithm. During the index building uh, stage, we sample, uh, we sample and cluster the data set to create uh, some buckets. We usually do this uh, with, with the k-means algorithm. Next, we assign each vector into its closest bucket. When it comes to search, we first identify the nearest bucket to, uh, to the query vector. Then we, search, then we search within the bucket for the result we need. Yeah, that is uh, IVF. Uh, another category is uh, graph-based algorithm. Which is very popular, uh, uh, which is very popular and widely used uh, nowadays. Uh, in this algorithm, each vector is uh, treated as a node, and uh, and uh, the nodes are connected with edges. The process of uh, building an index mainly involves uh, connecting these uh, these nodes. There are ver various uh, graph algorithm, and each one has its unique solutions so, uh, to this building process. So we will skip it for now. Uh, during this search phase, uh, we start from an entry point and uh, add uh, its neighbors to the candidate set. Then we find the closest point to the query vector uh, to the query vector from uh, from the uh, from the candidates and repeat the process again and again. The uh, the right the right side of the screen shows an example of a search process. All right, so yeah. Uh, after introduce, uh, introducing various uh, algorithms, we've got uh, we've go we've uh, we've go to uh, talk about how do we uh, use them in the actual application. So there are various uh, aspects to evaluate an index, such as build time, accuracy, performance, and the resource usage, and so on. So here I mainly I will mainly focus on two basic metrics. Build, uh, build time and the performance uh, to rep uh, represented by the QPS. So here's a table. So this table includes a flat, which is, which is a proof for search. And I have a flat uh, that we just we introduced just now. And scan, scan is uh, an I have a flat algorithm with uh, some compression and uh, CMD acceleration. And then this is uh, co uh, most commonly used uh, graph, uh, graph based index. You can see that we need to spend more time building and the index uh, uh, to, to building the index to get better query efficiency. I like to call this a trade-off between data freshness and uh, efficient efficiency. So it is difficult to ensure both with uh, within a single algorithm. So currently, the majority of vector databases uh, are using HNSW as a main index, sacrifice data freshness in exchange for efficiency. So here's the question. Given a single algorithm cannot achieve both, as mentioned, the data freshness and the efficiency, is there any chance to do it within a more complex, uh, com a complicated system? Yeah, this is what we are doing. Let's, talk, uh, let's take a look at how Milvus uh, tries to solve this problem. First, I need to introduce uh, the data structure type, the types inside Milvus. <laughs> Under each collection or table in some other database uh, concept, so we will have uh, a laser called the shard. So each shard can read data from the message queue at the same time uh, to speed up the data inflow. So next, uh, uh, next, uh, next is uh, segment. So the, the segment is the smallest data structure union inside Milvus. So we built one of the uh, one, one of the indexes we mentioned above for each uh, single segment. There are two type of uh, type uh, types of uh, segment. First is uh, green segment. Uh, current node read, uh, re, uh, reads data directly from the message queue and generate this uh, growing segment. We usually use uh, the flat index to ensure the speed of insertion. Uh, the growing segment is here to provide real-time query capability and ensure data freshness. Uh, the other is uh, the sealed uh, segment. So we, uh, when data, if data in the segment grows to a certain extent, data node will seal the segment, make it immutable, and then it will get handed off to the index node as mentioned before to create an index to provide the uh, more efficient uh, to provide more efficient queries uh, the image the, the image on the right shows a general structure about about what I talked and oh, oops so uh after the seal segment is indexed by index node it get loaded into the query node and replace the growing segment to provide service so at the same time, a new growing segment will be generated for, uh, for this shard to 
continuously support the refreshness. The uh, this complex uh, structure brings benefits, but it also brings many challenges. For example, how should we define the size of a segment? Uh, should it be very large? So larger segments introduce uh, challenges in distributed uh, scheduling and uh, failure recovery. So because any segment transfer uh, between nodes will be super expensive, it takes forever. More importantly, so they, they, they can be uh, incredibly slow. So let, let me introduce how Mimos does a query uh, with multiple layers of data structures mentioned before. Mimos queries, uh, Mimos queries require three layers of re re reduced operation. So the first uh, reduce occur at the kernel level. So multiple top K results obtained from different segments on the same kernel need to be merged into one uh, merged into one result here. The second reduction happened at the shard level. So since uh, segments within a shard can be distributed across different uh, kernel, so the result pro uh, produced by the kernels need to be transferred to the le uh, shard leader nodes. The shard leader is also, is also one of the kernels uh, for another round of uh, this reduction. So final aggregation takes place uh, at the proxy level. Uh, results from, the, uh, from multiple shards uh, are combined here before return back to the client. Okay, the graph on the right shows the relationship, the relationship between index building time and segment size for uh, HNSW. This is the most commonly used uh, index. Uh, larger segment result in longer index uh, index building time. So, and uh, this will lead to a uh, uh, accumulation of growing segments we mentioned before. So remember, HNSW's search speed is 500 times faster than the brute force search. So the growing segment could slow everything down and uh, uh, and affect the entire process significant. So how do we solve this? Should we make uh, the segment uh, segments uh, smaller? Okay, uh, let's make a guess. So which is faster? Uh, which is faster in the search operation? A larger segment or uh, many smaller segments? The chart below shows the uh, search speed of uh, ancient software at different sites, ranging from two, uh, 0 0.25 million to 1 million vectors with uh, uh, 768 dimensions. So maybe it's anti-intuition. There, uh, there is almost no visible change in performance. Uh, it means that with a constant to uh, total amount of data, each addition segment makes our search slower. Uh, so in addition, uh, since each segment requires uh, its own metadata, having too many small uh, segments can, great, uh, can greatly increase the pressure on metadata storage. Uh, it's it is, it is in, Mil, uh, in Milva's uh, work. Yeah. Uh, therefore, it seems that very small segments won't work out either. So what should we do then? Wait, just, just to be clear, the, the growing segment is just, it's a flat index, right? Not the HNSW? Uh, yeah, it's a uh, yeah because session side building is super slow, yeah, so yeah. we need to make so so, so the growing uh, segment need to serve the data freshness, so it's a it's a flat. Got it. okay, all right. So like your diagram here looks like looks like your table like the looks like the graph structure of HNSW. But you, oh, really... so the, Go ahead. this is a uh, okay. No, the graph is try to explain that uh, when 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 no matter how big your your graph is, the search time remains the same. So for, if for... you have so Sorry, sorry yeah. for H, for HNSW or for flat? For HNSW, it's a graph. Got it. Okay, okay. But, the, so, but you're talking, yeah, you talk, just to be clear, but you, this, this, your, the small growing segment is the flat index, though. Uh, yeah, we, we talk about the small growing segment. Oh, sorry. I I say the title is a small growing segment. Uh, there's a one more, uh, one, 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 one more thing behind it is small growing segments uh, leading to small sales segments. Got it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, since uh, we prefer small segments when, insert, uh, uh, when, when we inserting data and the large segment, the larger segment uh, once it, the index is built as mentioned before, because uh, the growing we need to, the, the brute force we need to as small as possible, and uh, the the action sub this kind of thing we need to uh, as large as possible. So why we not just uh, uh, build a small index first and then merge them together? Basically, this is what we are doing. This is compaction mechanism inside of us. Uh, in sales, uh, 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 in sales segment before 
they getting too big during the insertion process to ensure the short building time. And uh, data node act, uh, data node actively merge small, uh, smaller segments together, and which uh, then pass the to index node to build an uh, index. Final, uh, finally, the current node loads this uh, loads uh, this uh, bigger index and replace the indexes of uh, the small segments uh, that are uh, that were merged. Now we have uh, larger segments to support more efficient uh, search. It seems like we have solved this problem, but what if the index node is super busy? For for example, when when there are when the resources is limited, or when the insertions uh, uh, when the inserts occurs rapidly. So it's about a growing index. Still, remember this table. Our choice are not only limited to the brute force search and the graph uh, graph algorithm. What about IVF and the scan? as a middle solution for growing segments. The indexing time for scan is, uh, uh, is less than one fifth of HNSW, but uh, its, perform uh, uh, its performance is 200 times comparing with the blue for search. To adapt uh, uh, this idea, MIVA supports using initial part of the data inside the growing segment as a sample for classroom, uh, as, as mentioned in the algorithm part before, uh, to build a bucket and then all subsequent inserted data in uh, in this growing segment, uh, in, in this growing segment will be simply placed into this corresponding bucket, so it will be super fast. You might still concern whether the build speed is fast enough or not. Uh, this chart shows the relation between the amount of inserted data and and time, uh, with three lines representing brute force search, IV flat, and the scan representatively. The bound in the the bound in the middle of uh, this line indicates the start of the clustering. Due to the system overhead, so, such as message queue, write and raise, network communication, and so on. So there's actually no sec significant speed uh, difference between the three different solutions. This means that no certain insert speed degradations, uh, but uh, 200 times faster in growing segment. Yeah, this is a good way to go. In addition, we, uh, this design ensures that uh, the, fi the final index in MIOS is mutable. Therefore, we can choose, uh, uh, choose the most uh, suitable optimization strategies based on data distribution uh, during the index building time, such as uh, some compression and uh, pruning strategies. And also, even if the sealed index, the sealed index is IVF or scan, which is the same as a growing one, uh, because uh, because in the growing segment we only use the initial vectors as a, a sample, uh, this will make the quality of the index uh, uh, get affected. So re, re indexing the immutable segment is still very necessary. Well, sounds like uh, we have solved the the issues of uh, both data freshness and uh, efficiency, balance uh, data sec uh, uh, balance the, the segment size and uh, accelerate the growing segment. So anything else? In a typical vector database uh, uh, application scenario, unstructured data is uh, transformed into uh, uh, into embeddings uh, through a model, and then inserted into MIOS to uh, to provide uh, search capability. However, as models are frequently iterated, uh, vectors need to be regenerated, and resulting a large batch of uh, offline uh, a batch of offline vectors. That need to be re-imported to MIOS. So, how do MIOS uh, deal with this offline import scenario? In addition to support online scenarios with streaming insertion mentioned before, MIOS also supports some offline scenarios uh, through batch insertion. Okay, the mainly through uh, uh, mainly we mainly through three. Uh, possible. Yeah, first is uh, MIOS allows a direct transfer uh, transfer for. Uh, of uh, raw data to the object storage. Uh, this can help skip a complex insertion process from proxy to message queue and data no need to be read by uh, read out by the data node and uh, get partitioned and then get read into the object, all this kind of stuff. And also index node, uh, uh, also this approach can bypass, bypass the issues associated with uh, compactions and uh, uh, growing segments. The index node can directly read the data uh, to build the index, and it can greatly improve the efficiency of uh, data writing. 
But just be very clear. So this is saying that like if you you could have some Spark job that is ingesting data from something else, and then you have it write out to yeah. S3 or whatever object store you're using, and it, and it's writing out into a middle of a specific file format, or is it is it yeah. just like par, par, parquet files or something? Uh, it's a parquet file. So you put a parquet file here, and the index node will do that. Uh, okay. Thanks for you. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Uh, let's continue. So the, the second pathway is uh, uh, is a Spark. So data can be imported from uh, imported into Milvus via Spark. So in Spark, users can define some uh, data preprocessing tasks, such as uh, embed, embedding extraction from the unstructured data, uh, data filtering, and so on. The third pathway, uh, uh, data can be can be batch uh, can be batch export from Milvus to Spark. Processed and then imported back to uh, to into Milvus. We can perform some optimization based on global distribution of this data. So, for example, this cloud will periodically export all vectors from Milvus. And remember, uh, the IVF index we mentioned multiple times before. Yeah? So, in Spark, we will perform a global IVF indexing and make a segment each segment a bucket. Sorry, and then import the data back to uh, back to Milvus to. Uh, during the search, we can skip most of the segments based on their distance from the from the uh, query point. So this achieve performance uh, improvement. Okay, now we have finished the introduction of uh, Milvus data writing path, and I would like to briefly uh, br briefly review the uh, how the features we've discussed support machine learning. A simple machine learning pipeline can be roughly divided into offline data process prepar preparation. A model training and online model deployment and inference. So, from the offline per, uh, offline perspective, a typical use case is uh, data mining through uh, sim uh, similarity search. So, let's uh, take uh, uh, autonomous driving as an example. So, uh, imagine an autonomous driving vehicles encounter a bear on the road. So, it is unable to recognize uh, what is uh, what what is there uh, what is, what is this and uh, unable to take the appropriate actions. So it might nudge closely and get, uh, get the bear pissed off, which is quite dangerous. Uh, to, 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 to make sure we, will, we, we don't mess up next time we see a bear on the road. So we need to first improve the ca capability of our uh, perception models uh, in fine-grained classification to recognize the bear. To achieve this, uh, we need to add images of bears crossing the street in our training data set. Uh, as you as you know, we don't we don't see bears are crossing the street every day. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit rare. So rare data, uh, rare rare data like this uh, requires specific data mining. Uh, and commonly, uh, commonly used approach, uh, commonly used approach is to extract the embedding of the uh, bear image. Then search uh, search for image with uh, similarity embeddings in the databases like Milvus, and which usually usually contains thousands of hours of uh, driving records. Uh, data mining and uh, model training are always uh, accomplished with very large data set. For instance, Tesla, uh, as far as I know, Tesla's uh, training data set is uh, is in tens of billion. This is a uh, size. Uh, Mills is a flexible, uh, flexible distributed architecture and can handle uh, large scale vectors very, very well. And these batch processing pathways provide a fast insertion speed and more convenient uh, ETL pipeline. These two factors uh, together give uh, Mills the uh, capability to handle scenarios at a billion scale level. <laughs> On the online side, in addition to classic uh, search and the recommendation, Vector database, uh, uh, vector database uh, are also important in current hottest domain, the LLM, the large language models. So in this area, agent is typically uh, the agent is a typical scenario. An agent uh, is an AI system based on LLM that can auto complete uh, auto complete uh, complex tasks through multiple rounds of dialogues with uh, LLM and the third party interface core. <clears throat> So in, in an agent system, so the AM is a uh, forgetful brain, while the vector database is a uh, hippocampus. Uh, the memory loss, uh, the memory loss makes every interaction with uh, LM like uh, starting or starting over again again uh, from scratch uh, in a closed in a closed book exam. This present 
uh, the, 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 pres uh, the, the presence of vector database turns this in process into an open book example, I would say. Uh, on the other hand, the agent, uh, the, the, agent uh, the, the, the agent system can browse domain knowledge and uh, uh, private data and provide, uh, provide to LLM to make answer more accurate. And also the agent uh, can record its own operations history, better understanding the user's needs and uh, achieve better personalization. This scenario has uh, high demands on real-time insertion speed, performance, and uh, data visibility of uh, vector database. Uh, uh, and uh, these uh, issues, uh, MILVA's streaming insertion scenarios actively seeks uh, to address. Yeah, so because we don't want to say we have a rubber here and we talk with them and uh, it reacts super slow. Yeah. Well, it seems like uh, MILVA uh, has <laughs> converged on Pathway, uh, on, on the pathway to supporting machine learning. We must feel very safe to think where we are here. Yeah, cheers. No, so vector database is a completely uh, new field where, so, uh, where all solutions are far away from mature. So also new challenges uh, have uh, just arrived in the era of uh, AI as uh, machine learning develops faster and faster. We also need to constantly think uh, and uh, change to catch up with uh, development. So next, I want to share with you some of my thoughts about DB for machine learning and machine learning for DB. Uh, and uh, the directions we need to consider, in, also the directions we need to consider in the future. Uh, there are no clear answers and uh, solutions here for these questions yet. And I hope this can bring some food for sorts. <laughs> with machine learning technologies evolving, uh, models uh, rapidly enhance their capability to understand more complex semantics. Uh, meanwhile, search, uh, search technologies uh, uh, that are boosted by machine learning also get evolved. For example, once I, uh, once I found an incredible comfortable pillow at a friend, uh, at one of my friend's house, then I decided to buy a similar one and try to search for, uh, search for it online. Let's think, how, uh, let's think about uh, what would happen in different development stages of search. First, in the first stage of the uh, keyword search, I would just type the a pillow as comfortable as a cloud, and what is the result? Yeah, maybe I will get a, a cloud-shaped cookie cutter, and well, some pillows. <laughs> or, uh, of course, it can also be a pillow uh, that looks like a cloud, yeah. Okay, so next step is uh, to browse through all products one by one. That takes uh, forever. Um, moving to the next uh, stage, so now we have image search. I just remember that I happened to take a photo of my friend's pillow. Okay, looks like I can do image search with that. What do we got? Yeah, at least I get a lot of uh, pillows at this time, no cookie cutters. Okay, so let's browse. Uh, next step, now this we have some multimodal search. We can provide an image and add a description, and a pillow as comfortable as cloud. What I get this time, uh, the re the search isn't just uh, about simple image matching anymore. Comments and descriptions uh, on softness of the pillow are also taken into consideration in this result. So finally, we get uh, uh, in this time we found the target pillow. It looks like sim it looks similar and uh, uh, to to the one I saw and super soft. To keep to keep up with uh, fast growing machine learning, so vector database also need to be more smart when searching for similar images, we would prefer the search searching result to be similar to the original image at a semantic level, not just a similar, uh, similar outlook. Uh, let's take a look how, uh, how vector database defines similarity. So currently, uh, almost all vector databases define similarity between two vectors based on the distance of the vectors uh, in L2, IP, and cosine space. Uh, it, it, it will, uh, I, will, I, I will call it semantic similarity, Sem uh, semantic similarity, and co uh, correspondingly, sim uh, uh, I will call it mathematic uh, similarity, and correspondingly, semantic similarity represents a real object similarity of two unstructured data. The current uh, presumption is a ve in vector database is that these two types of similarity are equal, uh, equivalent. So uh, the question is, uh, are, are they the same? I would say it depends, and or or say most most of not. In fact, uh, the academic world has a lot of uh, search in this area try to solve this problem. So, 
there, there are many solutions, for example, using uh, user-defined distance uh, calculation. It can even be uh, machine learning models, or you can directly use a model inside a model inside a, 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 instead of the a, a, instead of an algorithm as an index to do a similar research. So the feasibility of these approaches and how to implement how to implement them, or whether there are any better uh, method to address these semantic understanding issues in vector database, all these uh, directions we need to explore and find answer to. Uh, next one is about some uh, dim uh, dimensionality curves. So as models grow larger and uh, more complex, uh, the dimensions of embeddings uh, they extract uh, are also increasing. So uh, at the same time, to repeat more complex, to, to, to represent uh, more complex uh, semantic info, vector dimensions uh, are also getting larger. larger. Uh, this process significant challenges uh, ch uh, uh, brings uh, significant challenge to the storage and uh, computation of vector database. Uh, also, high dimension can result in distribution of the data uh, to become extremely sparse. This makes semantic info more difficult to be measured by uh, the, the exceeding, uh, existing uh, metrics like L2 or IP, these kind of things. This is uh, uh, a perspective of uh, curse of dimensionality. Therefore, how to reduce the dimension and the compress the data is a very important topic uh, in the related, related fields. So there are some dimensional reduction algorithm on the model side trying to solve it, such as uh, PCA and TSNE, uh, this kind of thing. So if in the field of vector search, there are also many different quantization algorithms, such as PQ and SQ and AQ, this kind of thing. Uh, this algorithm sacrifice uh, accuracy for better storage usage and uh, perf uh, performance. However, the sacrifice accuracy, uh, sacrifice accuracy uh, is from the perspective of mathematical similarity. So therefore, a very, uh, a very important challenge is uh, how to compress and reduce the, uh, dimensions while retaining as much semantic information as possible. In addition to the, in addition to the database uh, catching up uh, to support machine learning, machine learning can also help enhance the uh, database. Uh, machine learning based uh, auto, uh, machine learning uh, ML based uh, auto tuning is one of the most mature scenario, uh, just like uh, auto tuning. Uh, what is auto tuning is doing yeah, right now? So, in fact, uh, compared to the deterministic search method of traditional search, uh, ML tuning can uh, can can play a greater or bigger role in the vector database area, as it's a prob probabilistic search uh, allow for more com uh, for flexibility. So aside from the performance improvement, vector database need, uh, need, need to maintain relatively stable accurate, accuracy under different uh, searches to support business scenarios. And this is another area where machine learning to, uh, ML tuning is uh, needed. Taking, uh, taking the IVF uh, index as, it, as mentioned earlier as an example. So from the, uh, from the performance perspective, besides a high level adjustable parameter similar to traditional database, uh, there is also a big space uh, in the algorithm side. User can adjust the number of sample, the number of bucket, the number of uh, bucket involved in the search, the type of compression used in each bucket, and, uh, and the extent of compression, this uh, and so on. So, and from the user usability perspective, uh, when we try to search the top k nearest points, the different value of k, the top k, how many k you want to get, will affect both performance and accuracy. So for example, a larger key obviously requires us to search for more buckets to ensure the accuracy. So therefore, we, uh, we, uh, we need to dynamically assign different strategies to each query, uh, different parameters, different uh, how many buckets this comes into each query. So in this count, when users do a search, we will have a model that will take the size of segment, the number of segment, the type of algorithm, and the size of key, this, all these kinds of things into consideration and dynamically generate a parameter to ensure the accuracy uh, stay uh, accuracy stay within a relatively stable range. But isn't the challenge though, because it's like approximate, it's not like, um, yeah. like, you know, it, it, like, like using auto tune as an example, like there's a, there's a hard objective measurement we can, we can use to say, is, is the AI making the system better? Like is the P99 latency going down? In your case, uh, it's this fuzzy thing where I think it sounded like you were adjusting how you know they want how many k items you look at, but like the 
the end user won't be able to say, oh yeah, like this is better than I would have had before because like it's a subjective, you know, response anyway. The answer is like, you know, it's subjective to the context of the person what they care about. Right. So how do you, it seems uh, like a fuzzy, fuzzy thing to measure to try to improve. Uh, actually, so the necess- I think the, mo- the, the most important necessary is from the usability perspective, as mentioned before. So when you do a search, you maybe it's subjective that the recall or the precision, the accuracy is what is what, and but you will have uh, some uh, underlying expectation that uh, the result will be like this. For example, if you if you have a very very big K and you only ser- uh, you only browse two buckets mentioned here, so the accuracy will be super low. And mm-hmm. sometimes you search on Google that this time it is uh, yeah relevant. This is good. Res- uh, result is good. And the next time you try to search more, you iterate and more pages and irrelevant at all. So that is not totally not, not acceptable in real production scenario. So it is super important to maintain the accuracy in a, in a relative range. But what's, so what's, the, the what's the feedback mechanism to know that you're doing you're doing well, you're doing better than maybe you were before? Uh, no complaining from customers. <laughs> so if you do nothing, of course you will get some because uh, because uh, pres- uh, the, the the accuracy will change. The accuracy will varies with a different case. Okay. All right. Thanks. Keep going. Yeah. So finally, let's uh, uh, let's get back. Let's go back to the two questions posed uh, at the beginning of this talk. Uh, question one is: What is the relation between traditional search and vector search? First of all, vector search is not replacement of the traditional search, but uh, uh, complementary. Traditional search focuses on uh, more on keyword matching, while vector search focuses more on the context of semantic matching. So currently, uh, many search system contains both keywords, uh, key- keyword search system and semantic search uh, system. When it gets when we gets result from both modules, uh, there will be a post processing step uh, working on result merging and re ranking. This is a uh, most uh, uh, this is a common perspective, and uh, we start to rethink relation between traditional search and uh, vector search. Uh, we divide uh, our keyword search into uh, two parts: sparse vector extraction, uh, ex- extra- uh, extraction, and sparse vector similarity search. So we can simply use a traditional static statistic based uh, uh, method like uh, BM25, TF-IDF, this kind of thing to extract the sparse sparse vector. Uh, as uh, and you use a uh, brute force on the sparse vector uh, search uh, on sparse uh, vector search to replace uh, classic uh, uh, keyword search. And this structure can bring us more flexibility. For example, for from the perspective of sparse vector extraction, learning based uh, method can also be used to enhance the understanding of hidden semantic informations. Uh, like uh, the splayed uh, uh, model, it's a very hot uh, model uh, these days, and uh, as mentioned here. So for sparse vector search, uh, search in addition to use uh, exactly exactly search like brute force, we can also apply some similarity search, uh, similarity strategies uh, like what we do in the dense vector. Uh, this tree, uh, this tree is a little bit of accuracy to accelerate the search uh, search prox- uh, process. So I like to call this a process of vectorizing traditional search. Following this, uh, let's think about the second question. What is the relation between traditional database and the vector database? So let me give an example. What, uh, uh, what, 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 can, what, what can we do if uh, uh, we need to use a picture of dog to find the uh, three most similar type of dogs? Uh, a, con- a conventional vector search would return uh, three most similar docs, Im- uh, docs images, which in our case are Snoopy 1, Snoopy 2, and Snoopy 3. Okay, you might notice that this is a classical group by scenario because you don't want a Snoopy, you want a three different kinds, and this is a classical uh, group by scenario. So it looks like we can try group by uh, docs name and uh, then search for most similar image on in each group. In each group. And now uh, we get Snoopy, Goffy, and Pluto. Uh, let's let's take one step further. So, what is what if the database doesn't have the name column for uh, for us to to group by? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then we get Snoopy one three one two three again because we don't have the name column. So it sounds like we need some uh, need to group by the image directly. So this means that besides the deterministic stream matching, 
We also need uh, cap cap uh, capability to group a vector through probabilistic uh, uh, similarity. Now, uh, let's simply group by the image vector themselves, and then the vector database will group similar snowbees together and brings Gauthier and Pluton back. Uh, now let's uh, uh, let's uh, besides besides the group I besides the, uh, besides the group I we can also have a aggregation based on it or join operations uh, and other functionalities. So we we can see that the uh, the features required for traditional database uh, also apply to bare database. It is uh, just that we need to re-implement uh, them in a prob probabilistic way rather than the traditional uh, deterministic way. So sim uh, similar, uh, sim similarly, just uh, like ver uh, vectorizing traditional uh, search, this uh, I'd like to call this uh, vectorization of a traditional database. So actually, in the era of uh, machine learning, we, 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 we vectorize the text into token, image into queries, and we vectorize everything. So uh, I like to leave a question here. So, what else can 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 can, can we think to of the uh, can we think of the of that is on the way to be vectorized in the future? Yeah, yeah, that is uh, all from my all of my talks. And thanks. So, any questions? Okay, I will applaud and pass to everyone else. Uh, again, thank you, Lee, so much for doing there, being here. Uh, we have time for one or two questions from the audience. If anyone wants to go for it. All right, so I'll, I'll ask my question. Um, it maybe you might have mentioned this, and I just missed it. The you guys have the ability to do like searches with the um, like the non the non embedding. Like, so if I want to say, show me all of the the documents that have this sort of keyword semantic search piece and that gets that goes to the transformer that gets an embedding and so you do the approximate you know similarity search and the vectors on that but then i also want to filter where the document is older than 10 days how do you guys handle that are you embedding the additional metadata or the attributes about every ent entity or object in the index itself or are you doing a, a separate search how does that work for you guys Oh, so 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 sorry. So do you mean if the data is pretty old? No, no, no. I mean just like how do you handle uh, combining semantic search based on the vectors plus the or sorry, similarity search based on the vectors plus additional like scalar attributes to do additional filtering, like where clause, like where age is greater than this, or where country equals equals Canada or something like that. Okay, okay. So this is we call it uh, uh, filter search. So we also will have to do the same thing. So we will have uh, because I would say vector database is uh, uh, is not a replacement or something of traditional database. It's just an extension because yes. we also support something traditional database support. We have uh, this scalar uh, column, and uh, we will do some. Uh, we have we have some. Uh, some prefer we can do we will do prefer preferring with uh, inside it, and uh, we will generate a BSAP view. So this BSAP view indicates in this uh, uh, vector segment that uh, which point is get filtered, and then we pass this uh, BSAP view to the to the algorithm. The algorithm will uh, use it to do the in search, and this is how we do the do the filtering search. Yeah. Uh, so so you you filter on the the scalar values first then do the sim yeah. similarity search got it okay actually actually it's on our roadmap to make it more complicated because we noticed that uh, pre-filtering new filtering and uh, pre-filtering means that we i, I want to mention before uh, uh, before so we do the calculation before a scalar yeah. calculation before and then we do a vector and the infiltrate means we do the vector and uh, in the meanwhile we do the scalar one and uh, uh, some sometime post uh, they have different this they, they are suitable for different kind of scenarios and uh, we need some candidate analyzation here to say uh which one to go at the first uh, at the very beginning so yes this is our roadmap okay so then does that mean do you have uh do you have a notion of, of selectivity of the cardinality of predicates beforehand and like is that like for scalar for scalar columns you know there's well-known textbook techniques to do this but for like the indexes the, the vector indexes you know that's hard uh, right yeah, it's hard, and and also it's very it's a little bit complicated inside the vector database side because for different kind of algorithm, the filtering will 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 have different kind of uh, problem to 
to sell. For for example, I have things. Uh, it's bucket based. It's the most the obvious the thing is you need to enlarge the buckets you vault to get yeah. uh, very good accuracy. And for the for the graph based things, uh, another problem is uh, if uh, the filtering rate is too high, so which means they filter so many things out. And you need to decide whether you want to use this. You want to go through this uh, filter point or not. If you, if the answer is yes, it will be super slow. And if the answer is no, uh, there will be an island that you cannot, the, inside the graph, you cannot go out. So the, the accuracy is super, super low. You should have some spe special solutions for it. And also this is uh, what we are doing right now. Yeah.